Hey everyone, this is Dorkside Gaming. I'm Richard and I'm bringing you five tips to make your Gloomhaven gameplay experience just a little bit better. First of all, I would like to do a quick shout out. My videos aren't sponsored, not yet, maybe not ever. Uh, if you would like to help me make more videos, that means more editing, which means I might start releasing videos twice a week or more, then I'd love it if you hopped over to my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash dorksidecookies. Link is in the show notes below. We give discount codes. We give, um, I do boudoir photography with like cosplay girls and stuff like that. So, um, if you want any of those things, those are different tiers, but I give out a lot of free stuff. And also you can vote on which games I am going to go through next. So there you go. I'd love for some help over there, but otherwise let's get into it. So we bought Gloomhaven and it seemed amazing. We loved it. It was like, wow, this seems like the perfect game for my group, which really likes legacy games really likes D&D, &D, doesn't have time for D&D, &D, but still wants kind of that role-playing light experience. Gloomhaven, done. Okay. We played it once, and then we didn't play it again for over a month. Played it again, didn't play again for at least a few weeks. What was going on? Well, the game was frustrating to play. Fun game but it was just a slog to get through. So we've really, really optimized our gameplay, optimized, you know, everybody knows the rules really well now, and you can't, I mean, you're just gonna get better at the game. That's, that's not from this video. That's just automatic. You will get better at this game and you will play better. But there are some things we had to do before we were willing to play the game all the time, and I'm gonna share some of those things. So. Tip number one, you have to put some effort organizing the game. Now, as you can see, I have chosen to organize the game using Broken Tokens Organizer. I know there's another organizer out there. Broken Token doesn't sponsor me. I'm not loyal to them, but I do love their products. And I love this organizer. It's worked really well for me. You don't have to buy an organizer. You could figure out whatever way, I think personally, you could tear apart this box, get rid of the box, make another box and organize it with nifty boxes or, you know, any of the small boxes, figure something out. You got to put some effort into it. I posted a video of me building this organizer. It was not easy. Separating it wasn't easy, but now that it's done, it's so fast and so nice. A little bonus tip. So they give you this map holder, which magically holds every single big map piece. And they tell you, oops, they tell you to put tape on the bottom to hold it together because it will not hold together by itself. The sides also will not stay on after, you know, they did actually, they, they did for probably eight games, 10 games. But ultimately I used black gaffers tape and I taped the whole inside. And as you can see, it actually kind of, in my opinion, kind of looks nice. And if your OCD level is higher than mine, you can probably make it look beautiful. At any rate, gaffer's tape, this is just cloth tape that photography stores have, uh, or video stores, anything like that. And it's stretchy and it will last forever, pretty much. It's worked great for us. It's holding it together well. And I highly recommend if you have a laser cut wood solution like this to uh, tape the inside of the box just from the beginning, you'll be happier. Okay, so this allows us just to pull all the pieces out of the box immediately and then put all the pieces back in the box. Actually, it's kind of like a jigsaw Rubik's Cube puzzle thing, getting it back in the box, but it's pretty fast once you, once you know how to do it. All right, step number two. I avoided this for like four games. I really wish I hadn't. You gotta get software. I'm a computer person. I use a computer during board games primarily to look up rules and to play music. But for this game, I use a helper. In my case, I use Gloom, Gloomhaven Helper. It's free. It does not work on iOS. 
and we are almost exclusively iOS. So that means we have one person on our TV uh, computer, one person on my laptop, we've handed an old Android to another person, and then one person actually uses Android. So he's, I mean, it's usually a disappointment, but in this case, it actually helps him. The cool thing about the software, number one, you get rid of managing the attack cards for all of these monsters. That is a huge help. The software lets you just set the scenario like this, see, and then you put in your characters. It puts in the monsters automatically and it manages their initiative and what they do. And you also can put the conditions on it like so, and then you can manage the mana that gets charged or depleted all automatically. That has made our games tremendously faster. It doesn't have to be Gloomhaven Helper. That's what I'm recommending because it's both free and it works for us. Third, now this is a little bit of a spoiler, but I, I think it has to happen. Buy Blessings. At the end of the book, it says for 10 gold, you can buy two blessing cards and when they're triggered in your in just normal attacks they go away so if you're like us you might avoid them you may choose not to buy them that was a huge mistake the i'm going to reveal again it's a small spoiler contributing to the temple increases the prosperity of the town in the long run so you need to do it because there is nothing else in the game that reliably increases your prosperity level. Now you might say, why spoil this? Why ruin the game, Richard? Why are you making the game suck? I'm not. It doesn't suck to know this. You need to know this. Because if you're like us and you choose to play hardcore mode, where when you die, you die and you have to make a new character. When you make a new character, the level of your character is equal to the level of the prosperity. So if your prosperity is still at one, because nothing else in the game reliably increases your prosperity except donating, then you will be out of luck and you might have people quit the game. And I think they're right to quit the game personally. We had we didn't this didn't happen to us, but it could have. I was I was always worried. I knew that if somebody died and had to make a level one while everybody else was paying, playing a level three or level four, or now level five, there would, been, there would have been unhappiness. I would have been unhappy, personally. It would have just been a garbage experience. So increase your prosperity, donate to the church, not in real life, just in the game. It's going to be good for society. Donate in real life, too. Lots of charitable organizations. Donate to them. Help society. Helps you. That's how it works. All right. Fourth. Now, this is a little bit hard. At various times, you're going to get a city card. And at various times, the answers are going to seem villainous, heroic, snobby, um, humble. Be consistent, okay? The game does not reward boring people. And if you, if you didn't know, neutral is boring. If you're gonna be humble, be humble all the time, be a hero. If you're gonna be arrogant, be arrogant all the time. If you're gonna be evil, be evil all the time. If you're gonna be good, be good all the time because Ultimately, things affect your reputation up or down. Kind of randomly, just to be honest, it seems random. But in general, if you do heroic things, your reputation will have an opportunity to go up. If you do villainous things, your reputation has an opportunity to go down. A lot of cards will only happen you know, the only, you know, the, there's an option of either something will happen or something will not happen. And a lot of cards will only happen if your reputation is either above a certain amount or below a certain amount. 
And in my opinion, if you go through 10 of these cards and 10 times, or let's say nine out of 10 of these cards, nothing happens, throw all these cards away. Just throw them away. They don't need to exist. If the designer ever watches this video, that's my opinion. If nine out of 10 of these cards end up having nothing happen based off of the answer you choose, and I get it, I understand, we chose the answer. There was, an, uh, there was a possibility of something happening. We chose, because of whatever reason, the option that ended up with nothing happens. That effectively means these cards are worthless. It was a story for no reason. And so that's what I figured out. A lot of times we're basically punished because sometimes we were good because we thought our characters would be good in that scenario. And sometimes we were evil because we thought our characters would be evil. We're not playing humans. So we made decisions a certain way. Well, now we're neutral. And here we are, game 18, game 19, whatever. And a lot of cards just don't do anything at all for us. So be a hero, be a villain, choose a, choose a path, stick to it. You're gonna have a much better gameplay experience. All right, tip number five. All right, this is a legacy game, right? Things happen, you rip up cards, you have stickers, you don't wanna know what's going on. That's part of the fun. Right? It's just like old school D&D. &D. Hey, I open the door and they're like, a leprechaun is on the other side of the door. What? A leprechaun? Like, this is crazy. You want to be surprised. That's why you play legacy games. Most of us, that's why we play legacy games. Read the FAQ. <laughs> this game is hard. This game is not like other legacy games. There are so many things that we got wrong for a few times, like we thought we were allies of ourselves. So I was damaging myself every time that I, you know, used my crater jump ability where it hurts everybody near me. I'm not an ally of myself. I'm me and I have allies. It's just a small thing, but the FAQ answers so many of these things. I highly recommend just go through the FAQ and not just once, go through the FAQ several times. There's gonna be a link down below if you don't know where the FAQ is. It's long. There is so much to this game. You can click for some of the spoilers or not click to, for some of the spoilers. Do whatever you like there. But I think that reading a lot of the scenarios have an opportunity to make you question yourself and say, wait a minute, how can this be? What, what is the consequences of this ruling on something else? And then you might realize, I saw somebody on the forums on BGG who didn't know that there was scenario end rewards. The scenario end rewards, I mean, the, the scenario level defines the amount of bonus XP you get at the end of a scenario. I think Actually, even after he read it, I think he thought that it was bonus gold and not bonus XP. It's not, it's bonus XP. So read the FAQ several times. It's gonna help. I have found a lot of times that the things that make people frustrated are things that turn out not to be true in the game. You need to play the game also, like you need to play it the proper way. When I say the proper way, I mean like following the rules of the game designer because the game designer has built a game that is pretty well balanced. And if you start running it more like a D&D game, for example, if the monsters are supposed to loot, having the monsters move towards the closest loot instead of moving towards a villain or I mean instead, instead of moving towards one of the players it or just standing still however you want to do it it's gonna start making the game be a little bit weird if you start if you start making decisions for the AI it will break things because the monsters are supposed to hit traps usually 
they hit their own traps. And if you start making decisions that, oh, the monsters would like walk around them, it will mess up the game. There is a large component of this whole game that's made around an assumed understanding of the pathing of the monsters. And if the players start voting and saying, well, this is what the monster would really do, it's not going to work. And the strategy of the game that's been balanced a certain way won't work. So play the game however you like, but knowingly play the game that way. Say, I don't care if it makes the game worse. And every time that you break the rules, say to yourself, this is more realistic. If this sucks for the players, if something else doesn't work, it's because we chose to do it this way. And that's fine. I always say people can um, break the rules, mangle the rules, do whatever they want, as long as they know they're doing it. And then it, I, I find everybody can have fun. Otherwise, people start complaining about the unintended consequences and I find that to be very unfair to the game designers, that they broke the rules and now they're complaining at the consequences of them breaking the rules. That's my opinion. All right, bonus tip number six. These are the doors, okay? One side is open, one side is closed. We have a big table. We couldn't easily see these things. They didn't work well for us. So instead, what one of my players, Steven, did was he took a piece of cardboard and he drew little doors. And we use the standees. I guess it's the base for a standee. But we took a base and boom, door. It's awesome. Highly recommend having it. You can see this from across the way. If you have a 3D printer, maybe you print out doors or whatever. But this is, I mean, these are beautiful. Look at it. It's, I think it's super cool. You can turn them sideways to be open, closed, whatever you want to do. That's what I recommend. Works for us, and I think it'll work for you. All right, with that, that was my five tips plus a bonus tip for how to make your Gloomhaven experience a little bit smoother. And I'd love it if you commented down below things that you think would help people. I think it's okay to be a little bit spoiler light at this point. If they're reading this video, they're already kind of accepting there's going to be a little bit of spoilers. Don't ruin somebody's day. Don't ruin my day. I'm still playing. I'm only 18 games in. Comment down below. Ask questions. Maybe other people will answer. I'll answer if I know the answer. And I'd love it if you click like, click subscribe, click that little doorbell. Doorbell? YouTube bell. Click the notification bell. And... I will look forward to seeing you guys later. Bye guys. My office, my gaming room, the room where we record everything. So those are all my games, the table, boom. I actually have more games upstairs. That area over there is mostly my Cthulhu Wars overflowing.